Hi everybody. I've got some really nice walls to work on now. I had a master class here recently and I sort of uh, moved everything around as I explained in the other video. And so today I thought I would just kind of do some really fun things with paper. And I've got some ink here. I might dilute it a little bit, I'm not sure. I've got all my dry mark making uh, pencils here. I've got erasers. And then I also found this today at the local hardware store. It's this really awesome, uh, I don't know how you really, just a rod, looks like it's made of aluminum. It was 50 cents. And what I did was I taped a bamboo brush to the end because I want to have some really expressive marks with ink. And so even though this is a super long rod, longer than um, I probably would have wanted, I probably would wanna cut this off at some point. But the idea of it is to not have control. <laughs> and so we'll see what happens. I'm going to just pour some of this ink. And this is just traditional Chinese ink. Um, this one actually says silver black. I don't know if it really matters. I'm gonna open this up. Okay, so obviously that's gonna be really runny. And then I've got paper here. This is my Strathmore mixed media paper. And I'm just, again, going to be kind of just getting warmed up and back into it. And I'm gonna just try to exploit all the tools I have here. I've actually covered up my wall with plastic because I have a feeling this is gonna get super messy because I wanna use my hands and I don't really know. Um, we'll see. <laughs> It's just gonna be pretty messy, I can already tell. I've got some water soluble mark making tools as well. The art graph is all water soluble. That's these square little things here. I've got the graphite and the carbon. I've got some crepas and I've got some graphite here. So those are the things I'm gonna be using and we'll just see what happens. Kind of fun seeing how little control I have of this. I guess the longer it is, the less control you have. I like the really black mark that ink makes. It's really beautiful. Good thing about walls is that you can paint them again. <laughs> when they get all marked up, it's okay. Uh, so what will I do with this? Um, I'm really just doing this as a warm-up exercise. And I like to invent different kinds of tools and see what kinds of marks I'll make. I mean, this is an awesome mark. I don't know. Right now I'm keeping it super simple with my, you know, there is no color. It's just all about black and white. And at some point there may be some grays, but I'm just keeping a, a very black and white palette. I just don't know where these will go. And I, I may, um, come back in with some white. I want to get some really nice darks. I want to experiment with blacks and see how many different kinds of trans, you know, transparent blacks and more opaque blacks. And right now this is just ink. So I don't think I'm gonna, this is just one particular medium, but then I can, uh, bring in some other things. Like if I were to add acrylic to this, I could do that. I, I'd probably then come in with some white gesso. I'm 
try to cover up, conceal some of these marks. Um, when I go black over black, right now what's here is it's drying and you know it's not as intense as this so I, I don't know this is the first time I'm trying to do something like this and I don't really know what to expect which is why it's so much fun. This is now diluted ink and obviously it's going to drip because of the gravity. So I am kind of glad that I set up the plastic behind here. I actually want to obliterate quite a bit of this white paper. And then I'll come back in with my white and just keep playing like this. It's really fun. And, and right now what I'm, you know, I'm really focusing for the next, uh, you know, several weeks, months, I think I might really just be playing like this and not worrying about anything, you know, not, not trying to finish anything because I'm trying to come up with um, a theme or an idea for this show that I've got coming up. It's a solo show, University of Idaho. And um, I know there'll be paintings, but I don't really know yet what my theme or my idea is gonna be. And so I think what I wanna do is keep doing things like this and just explore, I guess, let what happens, the experimentation lead me in a direction that I like. We'll see what that is. It's all play and it's all really fun and there is no, um, no deadline, you know, no expectations. Uh, it's really fun just to let yourself go and give yourself the freedom to play. I think the play stage is super, super important. I think it's more important than any of the other stages in a way in the painting process. So. Here is some acrylic paint in a bucket, and here's my brush, same brush, but I'm gonna be using acrylic paint now just to make some more crazy marks, just to keep playing. And because it's acrylic, I'm gonna get a nice, thick, opaque black. Unlike the ink, which is gonna be really thin and watery, that's a different kind of mark. Fun to experiment with fast versus slow, thick versus thin. And again, there isn't a lot of control with this particular tool. This would just be sort of a, you know, whatever, it's an underpainting of some kind or just a drawing. And this is Strathmore mixed media paper. Not really um, meant for going into cold wax medium. Uh, you could do that though if you covered this entire thing after it's dry with clear gesso, then you could go back into it. But I'm not thinking about mediums right now. I'm really just thinking about shape, marks, and trying to do something I haven't done before. And seeing if I can, you know, what kind of control I can have with the tool as strange as this. 
this will, when it dries, be much more of a vibrant black than the ink. The ink is going to stay washy. But the fun begins when I can go back in with uh, white and obliterate a lot of this stuff. So that's why I like to put a lot of things down early so that there's more to cover up later. And uh, I guess if I hold it more like this, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, quite an interesting edge you can get. I'm probably splattering this everywhere, including on my glasses, who knows. But um, again, I think edges are pretty cool, especially a floppy brush like this. Um, you can kind of see how feathery that is. And uh, uh, a bit of a glare, but you can see all the crazy marks, all the crazy little edges and thick and thin, depending on how the light is hitting this. It's really fun just to get messy, I think. I started this as an exercise the other day and it started with ink and it's really just for play, um, goofing around and layering. So today I thought after using the ink and the black acrylic with these really strange tools, I would come in and use some white titanium acrylic paint and white gesso and I'm going to use this brown paper for mono printing and I get the brown paper from Ace Hardware Store. I'm not quite sure what it's used for, but it comes in different widths and you'll see as I use them. These are the different rolls that I have and they're just, they last a long time and I think they come in a longer length than this as well. But um, what they do is they just, they allow you to transfer paint really, really easily. I'm gonna start with the white gesso because I think that's gonna have better coverage. And this is very calligraphic, um, very much, uh, done with these tools on long dowel rods or long uh, the long wire that I was using so there is very little control and I kind of want to keep with that method. I don't want to interject a lot of control yet at this point so like right now this is what I do with the monoprint paper. I just put white gesso on it and I transfer like this. You can also kind of move it like this over and make it make the paint move. It's kind of a smear, different effect.
versus around. When you use a silicone tool like that, you can lift quite a bit of it and get a lot of variation in how much you pick up. This is all the monoprint. You can see the repetitive pattern, some thick areas, some thin, and then here's where I came in with the, um, the brush, the flat brush, more monotype, and a few black marks that are left. I'm going to let that set up, but you can see how it's a very much back and forth thing where you can start with one value, come in with the other value, go back and forth, keep adding marks, remove them, add them, uh, keep playing with it. 